um, you know, sometimes it's good to get punched in the mouth. It wakes you up a little bit, and then hopefully this will set the standard for where they want to play at for the rest of the season. Hello, everyone. Welcome into Tech Sags Rewind, presented by Specs here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. I'm David Nuno. Callie and Nick are helping me out. Uh, favorite part of the show, Calita? Um, I, well, the last segment just kind of went way off the rails, but I really think my favorite part was Max Wright. I really like what he always had to say. Getting it right say. with Max Wright. Yes. Cheesy name Cheesy. of a segment. True, but he's great. Yeah, he was, I, he was really I thought good. he was great. Nick, your favorite? Uh, bullying Callie. That was my favorite part of the show today. Thank you for providing some That's context so and some analysis. That, was great, that never happens. Yeah. What did we have on the rewind today, buddy? Oh, you want me to tell you? Why not? You didn't send I'm it. I'm trying to, to do like 15. Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, uh -uh. oh fact oh, check. Oh, fact check. He did send it to me. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Tell me in that voice who's on the show. Uh, no, I don't feel like it. Right. You go ahead. Kurt Bowles. Oh. Kurt was great, by the way. We had our uh, look back, our Texas series look back. Max Wright. Uh, we already told you he was great. Ryan Broninger, he was really good. And Peter Burns, he was really good. And we froze. Both of us froze when we mm -hmm. talked to him. You'll see that and more on the Tech Sags Rewind. Hey, Kirk, just your thoughts on what you saw from A&M this weekend. Obviously not the result they wanted, a uh, uh, poor offensive performance. But would you be crying up to the river if you're an Aggie fan right now based on that performance? No, because I think Notre Dame's a heck of a team. And that's a solid to great defense. And that's secondary. My goodness, did, did they ever play zone? Were they like man for man every play? And a sure tackling team, and they, they bring the lumber. So, you know, that, I only got to watch uh, in depth uh, the second half because I was still writing about the Texas win. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of. Now, Connor Wigman didn't look good, you know, and for him to throw, what, 100 yards? You know, and they miss Evan Stewart, Anaya Smith, and some of those receivers. So they got to get the offense clicking. But, you know, Mike Elko's a defensive guy. So that didn't surprise me at all. But, you know, Connor Wigman, he's, he's going to have better days, I think. Better, better than, say, Florida State, which ran for 21 yards against Boston College. So they'll get, they'll get well this weekend, right? I did call that game, by the way. Well, he did. did. He did. Yeah, I actually, I don't know if I called. I don't think I thought they were going to win. I thought they'd keep it close because I thought O'Brien is good at scheming up yeah. with time. I took Florida right. State. I thought they'd be angry and take all that frustration out on on Boston College, too. and it turns out they're just not good. Yeah, they're just not good. Rushed for 21 yards against BC and DJ Ungale. I've never been a fan of his. He reminds me of was it Jamarco Russell. Was that his name? Yeah, from Jamarcus. LSU? Yeah. Yeah, I just he's just not very accurate. I don't he, think he's very he, probably a great kid. But <laughs> yeah, probably is a great but kid. But has been around. I would like to, it, it him lost its center for the season, right? Yep, Mark Naboo yeah. done for the year, unfortunately. Boy, losing him and Reuben Owens, you know that, that's that's a big loss. So all right, I want your perspective because you know those guys, you know Connor, you like you know this team offensively. Was it frustrating to watch it because you know what they can do? And, and what do you think the biggest issue was? Oh, 100%. Um, I mean, getting to watch, you know, a game for the first time as a fan in almost seven years was was a weird experience. And, and man, I was – it was eating me alive sitting up there in the stands. I felt like I was helpless. I wanted to be on the, on the, in the trenches with my boys. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, anytime that you come into a new offensive scheme, you know, I got to be a part of that and watch um, us come into a new scheme with Jimbo Fisher – it's hard to go out against a really, really good defense for the first time and, you know, have that be the first game that you get some experience out there. Um, I think that this will be one of the best defenses that we face this season. I think that that Notre Dame defense is, you know, is really, really good in the secondary. And I think that they're a physical group in the box. Um, and I think that the, one of the main issues, whenever you go back and watch the film, they were able to play with a single high safety and, and pack the box as much as they want, because, as much as they wanted to, because they trusted their secondary to, to guard our receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think that any time that, you know, a defense has a luxury like that to be able to, you know, go one-on-one -on -one against wideouts, it gives you the chance to shut down the run game. Um, so I think that offensively for us, um, we got to look to get separation. And I think that we got to look to do what we can uh, connection wise between our receivers and Connor to, to minimize, you know, the defense's ability to make things hard for us. You know, we got to make them respect our pass game to, to where we can go out there and, and have our full offense available to us. Um, you know, I think that defense was, you know, they played a good game. They held a really good team to, you know, 13 points up into those last two minutes, whenever, you know, they had that last running drive, whenever they were able to run the ball a little bit against us. Um, but, man, I, I think that 
this next week, I'm expecting them to bounce back and be honestly ticked off uh, playing against McNeese State. You know, I think that um, this this offense is hopefully going to come out and put up a ton of points. Um, you know, sometimes it's good to get punched in the mouth. It wakes you up a little bit, and then hopefully this will set the standard for where they want to play at for the rest of the season. From a recruiting standpoint, tell me what, what the vibe was like for those kids. Yeah, it's, it was in a success. And just like it, you thought it would be because of the atmosphere inside Kyle Field, look, when and I put it on the boards in our running recruiting thread, when these kids come into town, I've said it a bunch, they're less tied to the result than the fan base, mm-hmm. right, or the individual fan. Because a lot of the people that were in the stadium wearing maroon and white, they wear the ring. They've invested a lot of time and money into this program. These kids, they go on a lot of visits. So all they're looking for is the atmosphere. Like, did the place leave me with an impression where I want to come back? Now, that is not to discount or undersell the importance of wins and losses in totality on the macro level, right? Right. On the micro level, that one game, that one instance, the result doesn't matter. But on the macro, it does. Now, Mike Elko being in the first year of his regime and his tenure at, at Texas A&M, he's going to get some leash, right? And I think a lot of folks that I've at least talked to in the football world are going, yeah, it's game one of a, of a new coach, and they played a really good team, and they lost, and that happens. But from what we understand and, and from the kids that we've talked to, the trainers, the coaches that we've talked to, uh, Kyle Field did what it often does, and it left an impression with a lot of those prospects that were in town, over 120 of them. I was able to uh, – I was on the – Sideline pregame, and there was like it was every, ridiculous. Everywhere wasn't it? I turned and looked, it was kids that I either covered, I knew who they were, and it was a uh, it was an impressive group uh, of players on campus. And for me, that one of the most important things was the group of commits that were there. And you had all the Cali kids and a bunch of the Houston kids and some kids from Dallas, and it was just a really good mix. I, I can't remember how many of the commits weren't there, but there were only a few. I know that Tiger Ryden played on Saturday. Kelvion Riggins had a test that he couldn't get out of that he's, you know, he's trying to graduate early, so he had to go take a test. So there were some, you know, uh, extenuating circumstances for the kids that weren't, that didn't make it. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I would say probably 80, 90 percent of the commit class was there. It's just pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why, I mean, again, if we're, you and I are having this conversation next week and talking about, man, wh- wh- why did this thing falter against McNeese State? Then all of a sudden, okay, then, then, that that sense of angst and that frustration can continue, but um, you know, and, and I and you can see the frustration from Elko. You know, he said, run the damn ball. I mean, you know, he knew what he wanted to do, um, and I and I and I think that's why I can't wait to be out there because listen, you've heard me say it on this show. I was saying it on other shows that I was so excited to see what Connor Wigman was going to do. Now that I felt like, hey, okay, he's he's somewhat or at least you know, told that he's healthy, he's ready to play. And, yeah, I mean, Notre Dame is a college football playoff team. I think they punched their ticket with that win, you know, looking at the rest of their schedule and the way that they look. They are legit. But for A&M to be where A&M should be, you you need to win those games. And and I, and I know that it was just, just such a disappointing way to start the season. But I'll be honest with you, I'll tell this to Aggie fans. I was extremely disappointed with the way that LSU had started off in Brian Kelly's first year. If they got embarrassed against Florida State, and then they end up playing in the SEC championship game. So all is not lost, but man, it's got to get a whole hell of a lot better. Galita, tell the people. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends about Tech Live. And Tech Rewind. And, and Tech Properties. And all of it. Everything. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.